Good afternoon, Kentucky. I'm Erica Bivens. Thanks for joining us. Kentucky Attorney General and Republican candidate for Governor Daniel Cameron in Lexington today to announce his plan to support law enforcement officers and reduce crime. ABC 36's Justin Walker joins us with the details in our top story today at 3. Justin. Cameron unveiling an alternative vision for Kentucky, what he calls the Cameron Public Safety Plan. It's a 12-point plan that he says will provide more support for law enforcement officers across the state. The plan includes working with the General Assembly to pass a $5,000 recruitment and retention bonus for law enforcement. He also wants to see laws that pursue the death penalty for someone who murders a police officer, advocate for the Group Violence Intervention or GVI program, and reform the parole board by increasing the vote threshold needed for releasing some of the state's most violent criminals. Public safety is the first responsibility of government. When we don't have safe streets, our economy and our schools suffer. Every Kentuckian has the right to live and move freely around their community without fear. Cameron also addressing why he decided to pull out of a September political rally hosted by a former gubernatorial rival. We'll have his response and what he now plans to do on that day coming up at 5. For now, Justin Walker, ABC 36 on your side. Well, let's get a check on that forecast with our chief meteorologist T.G. Shuck. You know, we've got some unsettled weather coming up down the road. Today, though, another nice day out there. Yeah, especially for this time in July. Yeah. We mentioned it yesterday. Uh, to catch a few days where uh, it is not overly hot. Right. Remember, our average high is 87. We were close to it yesterday. I think we'll be right on it today. But the lack of humidity. Uh, we have plenty of muggy days to come, I'm sure, through the rest of July and into August and even early September. So we'll take it out there. Bluegrass Pace Care, Sky VH, Camera Network, Hicks and Fonts and Camp. Checking out Hamburg, east side of Lexington at 85. So uh, we are a touch warmer than we were this time yesterday. Winds out of the west at about 5 to 10, so a bit of a breeze. 86 Danville and in uh, Richmond, uh, 82 in Somerset, 79 in Hazard. And once again, even though they're up a bit, dew points generally in the upper 50s and low 60s, and that is a really good place to be during the afternoon anytime in July. It is warm throughout the area back to the west, a touch uh, warmer. In fact, making a run toward the 90 degree mark plus out toward St. Louis. I think we'll be right around it heading into the day tomorrow. Another evening, great for outdoor dining. Early 80s will probably drop back into the 70s the deeper you go in the evening. But fair skies, some of those fair weather cumulus clouds we have out there right now will begin to go by the wayside. But with the lower humidity as the sun goes down, we take the edge off that warmth. We're going to be in much better shape tomorrow. Pretty comparable to what we had this morning. Mid 60s, maybe a few low 60s in the outlying areas. So nice quiet start. It will be a little bit warmer by a few degrees, especially here in the bluegrass, probably touching the 90 degree mark. But I still think we will be dry. That moisture, though, begins to pick up. So our humidity levels rise late tomorrow, more so into tomorrow night. And uh, again, that pattern that we've seen before of those thunderstorm complexes developing off to our northwest and then riding our way, even in a weakened state, a lot of times that'll set a boundary down for some additional development, which we could see on Thursday. So some off and on stuff heading into the weekend. More on that in your seven day coming up. The search continues for a person who reportedly jumped off a boat on Laurel Lake nearly a week ago. The London Laurel County Search and Rescue Squad says it's looking for a 51 year old man who disappeared five days ago. The rescue crew says he was last seen swimming in the lake after jumping off a boat and then went under. His life jacket was found, but the man was nowhere to be seen. Officials have not released his name, but search crews are still in the area today. We'll of course keep you updated on any new developments there. Well, Kentucky's Opioid Abatement Advisory Commission meeting in Frankfurt today to talk about the distribution of settlement funds. That commission is charged with administering the Commonwealth's portion of the more than $900 million in settlements reached with opioid companies. State leaders have been giving out grants from Kentucky's portion of a $26 billion settlement with opioid companies for their role in exacerbating the opioid crisis. Over the past year, the commission has conducted town halls in every corner of Kentucky to help them determine the best way to use the money. We're making sure that we have dotted all of our I's and crossed all our T's to conform with the necessary legalities of the master settlement agreements. We don't want to leave any room 
for any of our grant awards to be challenged in a court of law by any of the opioid manufacturers and distributors. Today's meeting was open to the public. The commission says it hopes to announce the next round of funding this fall. Well, state leaders today announcing Hitachi Estimo plans to expand its operations in Madison County with a $153 million investment. The company is one of Kentucky's largest automotive suppliers and continues to grow the state's manufacturing and electric vehicle support industries. The investment is expected to create 167 jobs. Governor Bashir says the project will invest in the current manufacturing operation in Berea to better support site improvements and renovations, including increased production levels lines and additional equipment. The expansion will include an additional 752,000 square feet on 62 acres and comes in response to increased market demand and growth within the EV industry. The investment will bring the company's total Kentucky employment across the Harrodsburg and Berea facilities to well over 2,100 workers. Happening tonight, the city of Lexington is inviting you to share your input for its Empower Lexington plan. The city says it's focusing on a plan for a resilient community and is looking to gather input through in-person and virtual meetings, as well as through an online survey. That next meeting is set for tonight at 6 o'clock at the Lyric Theater. The city says the plan will guide Lexington Fayette County in better adapting to changes, natural and man-made. The community-wide effort goes beyond government action and focuses on topics like ecology, transportation, transportation and land use, water efficiency, quality of life, among others. You can find more information and a link to that online survey by clicking on this story at WTVQ.com. Well, a popular restaurant in Midway is celebrating 20 years of serving customers. ABC 36's Jane Davenport takes us inside Wallace Station Deli and Bakery for a look at the Commonwealth staple. It is a beautiful day for Wallace Station's 20th birthday, and they are celebrating big today. 20 years for an independent business is a big deal, and it, I mean, it's just, we feel so loved in the area, for sure. You know, it's a, I think any restaurant that lasts 20 years, but especially an independently owned one, it's a big thing to celebrate. They will have an array of different games, like cornhole, soccer, volleyball, and in addition, they also have face painting and a live band from 5 to 7 tonight. And of course, there will be different specials on all your favorite food. Employees have been working hard all morning, setting up decorations to celebrate the restaurant's birthday. So come on out and help celebrate the Big 20 at Wallace Station. Reporting in Lexington, I'm Jane Davenport, ABC 36, on your side. Well, around a dozen University of Kentucky equine science and management undergrad students traveled to Ireland recently to learn from some of the equine industry's best. UK says the 11 students embarked on a once in a lifetime opportunity to learn about the world's top thoroughbred racing and breeding operations and sport horse facilities. Stops included several world renowned farms and a chance to learn about equine courses at a local college. UK students say it was a chance to expand their education and meet industry leaders and visit premier facilities. You can read more about their adventures by clicking on this story on our website. That's WTVQ.com. Still ahead, country music artist Alex Miller is joining us in studio to talk about his latest performances, summer plans, and a whole lot more. And in our nation view, NATO plans to send Ukraine a clear positive message on the path forward for its membership in the alliance. We'll have more from that crucial summit. 